first up, I have A Quiet Place 2. It's a sequel to the 2018 film A Quiet Place, which is written and directed by John Krasinski of The Office Notoriety. I was a really big fan of the first film. I am not a horror movie person. I don't like being scared in general, but for whatever reason, I just really enjoyed the first one. There are a lot of truly absurd elements in it, which I actually would like to think in any horror film. It's truly an absurd thing. Like if you weren't actually scared by it and you were to describe the plot of one of these films to somebody, they'd be like, what? What are you talking about? So I liked the first one. I didn't have any expectations going into it. There were some truly like ridiculous suspension of disbelief moments that I laughed at because it was just so wild, but I was having a really good time at the theater. And so when I heard that they were making a sequel, I was a little bit apprehensive because I was like, okay, I could see a couple ways that they could take this that could be really, really interesting. Or I could see a couple ways they could take this that would be really kind of money grubbing and not that exciting. Unfortunately, I think it leans more towards the latter. I'm not, you know, this isn't the most original story in the world to start with. And so you're borrowing a lot from the tropes of the genre. The most absurd thing to me, and this may be, I don't even think this is a spoiler, but I'm just going to, you know, mildest of mild moment. Like it takes place immediately after the first one ends. And so you've got all the main cast returning. You've got Emily Blunt. You've got Noah Jupe. You've got Millicent Simmons. And then they've added Killian Murphy and Jaiman Hansu. And look, there are some really big challenges when your film stars kids and you set it immediately after the first one, but you film them far apart because guess what? Those kids are gonna age and it shows. And no offense to them, kids should age, right? That's what they're supposed to do. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. But to say that the Noah Jupe who plays the son in this is the same Noah Jupe who, you know, moments after the events of the last one, like, no, that's not, that's not gonna fly. Like, this is, that's a pretty absurd ask of your audience. And then, it just gets more absurd from there. I will say that, you know, I think most horror movie directors could really learn from that Jaws Steven Spielberg school of the less you show, the scarier things become because we see just way too much. It's a monster type alien movie. You know, I, if you've seen the first one, I don't think you're going to see the second one without having seen the first one. So you know what we're dealing with. And we just see way too much of the aliens in this. And then the characters all just behave in a super illogical way, which drives me up the wall. Like these are characters who in the first one, I was like, all right, you know, they're they're smart enough to survive this sort of apocalypse up to this point. Like they've got their wits about them. And then they just all start behaving like dum-dums. And I cannot stand it. I think that, you know, the film centers more around the kids, which is fine. And Millicent Simmons, I would say, she's a really strong actress. But one of the things I really liked about the first one is that like it's pretty self-contained to this family and Millicent Simmons is a member of the deaf community and so and her character is deaf and so this whole family knows sign language which plays into the whole plot of the film and makes sense and I was like okay great she's also just a strong actress on her own but then the second one really sort of panders to a hearing audience more and the way they do it I was like I just feel like there should be more confusion around this these characters interacting with hearing characters because like they don't know sign there should be a lot more confusion happening right now and you could actually use that to build the tension right like people who are unable to communicate but instead they employ these really sort of absurd convenient tactics the first one saw in theaters had a good time i think these are definitely theater movies but this one i just i really struggled with the ridiculousness joy was gone for me i just was sitting there scratching my head being like why are they all being so dumb like what is happening here and maybe i'm just not the right audience for this in general people seem to really be liking this film and i don't want to take that away from anyone i think you'll be mildly entertained by it uh, i really like john krasinski i think he's a super nice person which is why people are hyping it up a lot but it's it's not a masterpiece or anything like that the first one was good but this one, it's it's unfortunate in that very rarely do the decisions made in a sequel make me dislike the first one. Like, usually I can be like, okay, let me just compartmentalize. Like, this was a bad choice. But but this one, I'm just like, okay, well, you've just, I don't want to say ruined, but you've, you've really taken away some of the positive feelings I had towards the first one as a byproduct of this. Like, I almost wish I hadn't seen it. But again, if you're going to go, you may enjoy yourself. If you are just willing to be like, you know what? I just want a popcorn flick. Although, be, eat your popcorn very, very quietly. Because again, it's a pretty quiet film. Uh, but yeah, if you just want to pop popcorn flick and like mindless entertainment this is certainly mindless if you were on the fence about it, if you didn't like the first one obviously you're not going to see this one if you were on the fence about it and you were a fan of the first one but you're not quite ready for theaters yet I would not say this is good enough for me to be like no 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 get back out there it's really worth going out to see this so I'm only going to give it 2.7 out of 5 and I think that's actually being a little bit generous but I you know I think part of it is just like John Krasinski's a really nice person and it, it's not a poorly made film necessarily except for the script and story and that's the most important part of the film so it's like okay well what am, what am I supposed to do here so yeah 2.7 out of 5 for A Quiet Place 2. 
And then the other thing I have this week is a new show streaming on Netflix. It's called Sweet Tooth. I have not finished it yet. I'm only two episodes in, but I'm really enjoying those two episodes so far. In fact, I had to take a break to record this because I was like, okay, if I, w- I would just sit here and binge this show if I could. It's based on a comic book by Jeff Lemire from DC Comics, and it takes place also in a post-apocalyptic world. Are you sensing a theme here? And it centers around a child, another theme here. And basically, there's a disease that hits this world, which I was worried seeing the previews and knowing the premise of this, that it would just feel too close to home right now. Like I'm still in the, I'm sure as many people are in the dealing with the trauma of like, oh my God, the world's sort of reopening and I don't think I'm ready yet phase. But anyway, this film takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. A disease hits mankind. And I don't know at this point uh, as a byproduct of this disease that a bunch of children are born that are human animal hybrids or that just happen to be at the same time that's part of the mystery but it centers around a young boy named Gus he has a bunch of deer like features he has like antlers and deer ears and you know can smell and and hear in a more animalistic way so he's like an enhanced sense of smell and hearing he's played by Christian Convery and Again, the other concern I had about the show was it's a show centering around a child lead and those can be just, it's it's dangerous territory. I think the kids in The Quiet Place did a decent job, but I think Christian Convery is killing it in Sweet Tooth. He's just really good and sweet and sincere, but also has to play naive, but not in like a dumb, annoying way. It also stars Nonso Anozi from Game of Thrones, and you will recognize him if you've seen Game of Thrones. Will Forte is also in it. And when I first saw it was Will Forte, I was like, wait a minute, is that Will Forte? So I am, I'm definitely intrigued by it. I think the characters are really compelling. This kid as a lead so far, again, I'm caveating so far, has just been really, really watchable. It's beautifully filmed. It, you know, it, it's supposed to take place in America, but I believe they filmed it in New Zealand. I'm like, of course they did. It's just, it's the cinematography is great. You can tell that there are moments that are homages, or I don't know even know if they're exact panels from the comic books but it's just it's well done so far I'm really enjoying it it is not so painfully close to home in terms of apocalypse that I think it's unwatchable and I just really want to know how it unfolds and there's a lot of moral and ethical dilemmas already brought up in the first two episodes and just the way they've done the world building and established it so quickly is very impressive and in fact just to go back to a quiet place too for a moment like the the world that John Krasinski built in that you know there was some ridiculousness but at least it sort of made sense in the first one and then he sort of unravels that world in the second one so definitely recommend Sweet Tooth so far it is available now on Netflix.